Shut up and sit down. Son, how you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News. All right, here we go. A Las Vegas passenger hanging out of a van pushes over and kills a bicyclist before falling out of the car and dying. Police are calling the deaths a senseless act. Two people were killed in Las Vegas, Nevada over the weekend in a collision involving a minivan and bicyclists that police are describing as a senseless act. Around 7 in the morning on Sunday, several cars were driving recklessly along the Las Vegas Hollywood Boulevard towards Sahara Boulevard. The witnesses said that a passenger in a minivan was hanging halfway out of the car, attempting to strike people on the sidewalk. What a genius. The passenger missed two pedestrians, but then struck a middle-aged woman riding in the bicycle lane further down the road. While driving down Hollywood Boulevard, they pulled alongside a female, and the passenger leaned out of the vehicle window and pushed her to the ground. At the same time, the passenger fell out of the moving vehicle and struck a light pole. Both were declared dead on the scene. Too bad about the woman, but who gives a shit about this idiot? I'm glad he hit a light pole and killed himself. What an idiot. On Monday, police identified the driver as Rodrigo Cruz, 22, who fled the scene before the officers arrived arrived, and was later apprehended. Cruz was booked into the Clark County Detention Center on one count of open murder. Perfect. Duty to stop at the scene of an accident and for violating the conditions of his parole. What a shocker. He is on parole. So, it's too bad this piece of shit didn't die with his buddy. He he even left his buddy. His buddy fell out and got hit by a pole and died and he didn't even give a shit. You have a woman that was out riding her bicycle and they pull up next to her and strike her, causing her to die. This this story uh, infuriates me. Complete stupidity. Well, at least one of those pieces of garbage is gone. Hopefully he gets his in prison. All right, let's move on to the next story, shall we? KFC is selling its fried chicken scented fire logs at Walmart. Back for a third year, the 11 Herbs and Spices Fire Log has sold out the past two years. There it is. The KFC 11 Herbs and Spices Fire Log. (laughs) I have not heard of this before. KFC has brought back its fried chicken scented 11 Herbs and Spices Fire Log for a third year. And this time it's being exclusively sold at Walmart. The item is priced as fifteen eighty eight, and will be available while supplies last, so you better get out there and get it. The item will also be available in Canada for the first time, so the Canadians can get that 11 herbs and spices smell going in their fireplace. This item has sold out over the past two years, with demand increasing. Who Who knew? That a KFC fire log was such a hot item. All right, let's move on to our next story, shall we? Man goes on first date with woman. She brings 23 family members along for the meal. Okay, I would have turned around and got back in my car and split. Women's cunning plan. It's a cunning plan to test a potential boyfriend back tires in spectacular fashion as well it should. 2020 has been a bad year for singles on the dating scene. Lockdowns and social distancing guidelines have really put a damper, dampener, I think it's damper, on finding the perfect partner. But things aren't all bad. At least you're not this man in China who went on a first date with a woman who brought along 23 of her relatives. 
The story begins in Zhejiang province where a 29-year-old man who'd been having trouble finding love during the pandemic was set up on a date by his mother. He was looking forward to the date and arranged to meet her at a restaurant for a meal together. Well, that was his first mistake. He should have picked her up. And when she had 22, three other people with her, said, no, you get in the car, the rest of you stay home. When he went to the restaurant, as they had planned, he walked in to find his date had turned up with 23 of her relatives. She said, let's all eat together. And despite not receiving any advance warning that the party for two had turned into a party for 25, the man sat down and ate with the family. Well, he's going to make someone a fine wife someday. As they ate, the table filled up with expensive meals and alcohol, which his date and her family members devoured happily. <laughs> I'll bet. At the end of the meal, the man was given the bill by the restaurant, and he was gobsmacked to find it came to a total of almost $3,000. Unable to pay the bill, the man snuck out of the restaurant without anyone noticing and returned home. That was the first good thing he did all night, leaving the woman to fit the bill. When she realized her date was nowhere to be found, the woman was reportedly surprised and attempted to contact him to no avail. She then had no choice but to pay for the meal. Awesome. Totally deserves it. Ask why she had brought her family members to her with the first date. The dumbass woman said, I was testing whether the man who might potentially be my boyfriend would be generous enough to pay for all 25 people, including my, himself and myself, including himself and myself. Well, I guess he flunked your ass nine test. And then she went on to claim that she was the victim. Of course, as she ended up having to pay for the meal. Serves you right. People online weren't sure about that, commenting that regardless of who pays on a first date, ambushing the other party with 23 of your family members is never going to go over well. Couldn't agree more. So glad she got screwed. Not the way she wanted to, but she did get screwed. All right, let's move on to our next story. This Day in History, November 7th. 1944, FDR wins unprecedented fourth term. Well, you can't do that anymore. In 1951, the 22nd Amendment was passed, officially limiting a president's tenure to office to two terms of four years each. Also on this day, Hillary Clinton in 2000 was elected to the Senate. Presidential elections results between Al Gore and George Bush were too close to call. 1989, two African-American firsts in politics. David Dinkins, a Democrat, became the city's first mayor, and Lieutenant Governor Douglas Weller, also, became a, also a Democrat, became the first elected African-American state governor in Virginia. In 1885, Canada's Transcontinental Railway completed. And in 1991, on this day in history, Magic Johnson announces he is HIV positive. That was huge. I'm glad he's doing all right. They figured out how to handle that, I guess. All right. And finally, this happened. <laughs> All right, let's see this again. I don't know what he thought was going to happen. Yeah. I think it's classic that he's laughing at his buddy there. That's how we are at work, too. We like to laugh at the misfortune of others. All right, that is going to do it for this edition of the aimless news like this video subscribe to our channel and most of all share this video far and wide because remember the aimless news must be told <laughs>